Right now, you're probably wondering, how did I get here? Well, let's be real, you're probably not. But I'll tell you anyway, just in case somebody, somewhere, someday cares. It all started with my first prayer, which was trash. The frame was wobbly and had to be calibrated for Z almost every time I printed it because of the wobbly joints and the wobbly sheet metal frame. I wanted to reuse as much as I could from it, so I chose to build a Voron Legacy. The only Voron with no manual. I used this belt tension gauge. For the base, I learned this trick from a video, so I'm using a concrete patio stone, and on top of it is glued a half inch PVC sheet because the patio stone is not as big as the printer. And then they're resting on top of a piece of one inch foam rubber. When the door is closed and I'm in a different room, I can hear almost none of the noises the 3D printer makes. These non serrated nibblers were very good for cutting the spring steel plate, which required only minimal deburring. I used some upgraded spider couplings that were recommended by the unofficial JG Maker forum. I designed these feet to prevent stress on the Z holders. And upgraded the extruder to the BondTech LGX, but none of this solved the Z wobble. So I ordered and installed the motors with the integrated lead screws from Stepper Online that Voron recommended. The bombs said 320 millimeters, which don't exist, but the 300 millimeters reached the Z minimum. Now the finish is great. It definitely prints PET G better than any of my previous printers. The JG Aurora A3S, the MakerBot Replicator 2X, or the Flash Forge Creator Pro 2016. I'm using the PET-G settings recommended by the Prusa Knowledge Base and 0.6mm first layer path width. Despite the parts fighting me every step of the way, the bad wiring with low ductility but high ductility sheathing, the bent stepper motor that was difficult to diagnose. Crashing into the bed because an inductive probe requires a metal bed and having to get yet another crimping kit because motors have a different size JST connector. And remember that missing documentation? Well, I decided to write it and it's available for download. One person said, if you need documentation, you shouldn't build this 3D printer. But that's just an excuse. Everyone has to start somewhere, even the experts. So I've gathered everything I learned from the few people on YouTube and Discord who knew about it and from my own trial and error. It helped me along the way and I hope it helps other people too. After about two months, I was done with all of the fixes, upgrades and calibrations. And I can tell you this, it is the best printer I've had so far.